Imperial Drone Deck Profile. That's what we're doing right now. And for the record, it's basically based around the starter deck Imperial Dramon. This new, new Imperial Dramon, which we're going to talk about in these deck profiles today. So, Imperial Dramon, BT8, Tier 1. One of the best decks of the format. I have been going back and forth on different variants of this list. Um, so I'm currently showing you what I'm currently playing. Uh, and I really like it. And as this will go on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to another congestion smash potatoes. That way you know all these days when videos go live. And play my circuit on Wednesday. That's right. Do it. Um, for the eggs, uh, four Demi Vmon, one Upamon. Uh, Demi Vmon, once we turn attacking, if you have jamming, draw a card. This will usually resolve uh, more than this. Which is why we're playing four Demi Vmon and one Upamon. That's it. Qu quick and easy. That's definitely the way past my opinion. Now, the rookies. This rookie lineup is not set in stone by any any fair margin. I keep alternating. Let me show you what I'm currently doing, though. Uh, we're playing four of the Vmon that come in the starter deck, the actual, like, Imperial Dramon starter deck. Uh, what this card says, for those of you that can read the Japanese here, you can reveal top three cards of your deck on play and add a free card to your hand, which is a bunch of your deck. <laughs> so, basically, you're never whiffing. So, we play four. We're playing four of the EX1 Vmon once per turn when you want to spend gain a memory. This will come up a lot because, as you know, Imperial Jermon cards are all about unsuspending themselves. So, this comes up a lot. We play four of it for that reason. We play two of the starter deck Vmon, the one with the inheritable if you have seven or fewer cards attacking, you draw a card. Now, what's really, really exciting is that this isn't a once per turn effect. So, like, there are some crazy combos you can get off where uh, you can draw multiple cards thanks to unsuspending and that kind of thing. So, this is actually a super valuable card. This and, like, Jam Demi Vmon, you draw a lot of cards. You do draw a lot of cards. This, Stingmon, like, you can draw an absolute crazy amount of cards with this Vmon in the early, in the early to mid game. It's really cool. I have no complaints about the card, to be honest. And uh, we're playing two Jamming Vmon, just Jamming Vmon. Just jamming Vmon. There's, there's not a whole lot of jamming synergy in the deck per se. However, it is Imperial. And the opponent might think we're playing some big jamming stuff. Um, to be fair though, I do actually think this is the worst rookie in the deck. And I have played anywhere from 0 to 4 copies of this card. I'm playing 2 right now. Uh, it's kind of a sweet spot. And sometimes it's nice to just have this right away and do some chip damage. but And draw. But, you know, I'm not super sold on that Vmon. Just jamming. The final rookie, 13th rookie, is one Madoki Betamon. There is a lot of memory gain in BT8 format, I'm finding. So playing the one Modoki sometimes comes up. Uh, the format's just very fast, which is not, I'm not sold on multiples, but I was doing like up to three of this at one point. It was kind of okay. Madoki's good. It's a good card. And I do recommend uh, giving it a shot. So that's that. 13 rookies at this current moment in time. I do like this lineup. It could change in the future. But all these rookies have a purpose. And uh, that's good. Good purposes. Um, fun fact. We are not playing the other Vmon. The one that comes in uh, BT8. The one that searches a multicolored card. Uh, reason for that is because we're not playing that many multicolored cards. Not really. So it does whiff more often than I'd like it to. So uh, yeah. There you go. Champions. We are doing the four Stingmon. The four Stingmon that comes in the Imperial Dramon starter deck. For those of you that can't read Japanese here, or can read Japanese here. Oh, Blair. If you have this card, in, if you have a blue Digimon in play when you play this card, it costs three to play, as opposed to four, which is very strong. And the Inheritable also reads when attacking, draw a card if you're blue, which will always happen. Uh, very, very strong card. We play four of it. We play three of the EX1 XVmon. By itself, it has jamming, which is very strong. And then the Inheritable, if it's free or Imperial Jamon, it also has jamming, which is good. So there is a little bit of jamming going on in this deck, a bit of a theme, which is why Demi Vmon is really the egg we play at four, because you get this more often than you think you do, plus the Vmon, plus a couple other cards. Jamming happens. It happens in this deck, which is good. It's a, a very nice to see card. Next, we're playing two of this XVmon. This is the XVmon that we play in the um, 
that's sorry. This is the XV Mon that we get in the starter deck, the Imperial Digimon. It's the same thing as Stingmon as terms of its playing cost, but if you have a green Digimon. So if you have a green Digimon in play, it costs three to play, which is really cool. The Inheritable is worse though, way worse, which is why I only play two of it. Uh, we play two of it because it's a three drop champion, basically. But it's Inheritable when attacking if it's green, if you have a green Digimon in play, it's plus 1000 DP for the turn. Now, this can happen multiple times because it's not once per turn. However, a thousand when you have jamming is virtually useless. That's kind of what I think about that. So we're only playing two of it. The last champion we're playing is one doggo, one armor doggo, because being able to suspend small things or stuff like that is really cool. Plus, the armor purge comes up sometimes. Just the one of is fine. Um, I haven't played more than two. I was really liking two. But it doesn't really do anything for the Imperial German theme of the deck. Like, like these champions do do things. Ha, <laughs> do-do. They do things for the Imperial German theme. Doggo here doesn't really do anything for the Imperial German theme, which is why I'm only playing one of it. But it does win games, so we are playing one of it. Um, other champions that I've considered playing, but I'm not playing at this moment in time, are um, Security, Cordramon. The one that pot of greeds out of security it's a really good card uh i i've i've play tested with that and i like it i'm just not playing it right now uh and then hybrids uh i have done some hybrids at this point i'm playing zero hybrids but um you can play hybrids if you want to imperial german gets all sorts of sneaky extra attacks so i found the hybrids to be kind of unnecessary but sometimes they are also a sneaky attack so it's kind of cool. That's fine. If you want to play hybrids, I wouldn't be surprised. If you want to play security Cordramon, I definitely wouldn't be surprised. For a reason we'll talk about later. So there's 10 champions in this deck. And I like to line up a lot right now. I probably... I, I wouldn't change the core stuff, like this stuff. I would not change this stuff. This stuff is a little up for interpretation, if you ask me. But this stuff, really good. Now for the champion. Oh, sorry, the ultimates. This card's broken. Actually broken. The DNA Digivolve, when you DNA Digivolve, you can bounce something small to the bottom of the deck. Broken card. And it unsuspends once when attacking. It's crazy. I'm going to show off a combo at the end of this profile with this card. It's fucking ridiculous. Okay? Good. So this card's broken. That's fine. We are playing two Dino Beam on. We're only playing two of it because it is objectively worse than Pale Drummond. It's a DNA Digivolve, which is cool. Uh, when DNA Digivolving, you can suspend your opponent's Digimon, uh, and it doesn't unsuspend if you DNA Digivolve it. If you just Digivolve, it just suspends. If, it, if it's DNA Digivolved, it it's, doesn't suspend, unsuspend at the start of the turn. Now, this can suspend anything. Anything. Chat. It's not limited by DP, level, or anything like that. It actually suspends anything, which is kind of huge. So it's good in the right matchups, which is why I'm playing two of it. However, this is the worst ultimate, in my opinion. Even though you can play ultimates with it, like other ultimates, even though you can DNA Digivolve, it's, it's not, I'm not a big fan of it. I am playing two of it, though. I'm really trying to give it the benefit of the doubt right now. And it is good, which is why I'm still playing it as a two of. But I'm just not a super huge fan of it, to be honest. Um, if you wanted to play EX1 Pale Drummond over this, I probably would be okay with that. The last ultimate we're playing is two of the original Pale Drummond, the one with jamming, and the one that if you're Imperial Drummond once per turn when attacking, unsuspend it. Uh, it does come up and does let you get extra damage. And that's all it is. So we're playing eight ultimates in the deck at this moment in time. Uh, I like this lineup a lot, with the exception of this, which I'm trying out right now. Um, but that being said, it could like this could just be more of this. It could also be EX One Pale Drummond. It could be either. Um, but I'm trying it out, seeing I like it so far so good. But you never know. The new Imperial Drummond from the starter deck, very 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 good card. For those of you that do not know what it does, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, when Digivolving for 4, you can play a level 4 or lower blue Digimon and a level 4 or lower green Digimon from its sources. 
for free. And it doesn't negate the um, on-play effects. Which is why I was playing Security Cordramon for a while. Because you can play Security Cordramon off this card and draw two cards, which is kind of funny. Kind of, kind of funny. This gets a lot of value if you DNA Digivolve. And we are playing six DNA Digivolve targets because you guarantee that you always have, you know, a blue and a green. Sometimes you just naturally do, though, right? Like, sometimes when you're evolving the stack up, you can, like, evolve Themon, evolve Stingmon, and then regular evolve, regular evolve. And then you can play both of these. But it's not as good. You really want to try to play two level fours with it if you can. Um, that's why I'm... This is the big boss monster. This is the main combo piece of the deck. Uh, I think the deck just... It, it, it operates best with this card. In my opinion. Uh, it, it's just a really good card. Uh, it's not the same way to play Imperial German, to be honest. Uh, back in the day, it was just attacking, big jamming, swing, stuff like that. Um, it's kind of okay. Not really a big deal. But uh, yeah, it's a good card. I do definitely recommend it. We're playing four Star Deck Imperial German, and we're playing one of BT8 level 6 Imperial German Fighter Mode. So you can digital this card for two if you're putting it on top of a Dragon Mode, which is, you know, possible. You can do that. You do play some Dragon Bolts. You know what I mean? So, like, it's good. That's a good card. Uh, when Digivolving, very strong ability. You return one of your opponent's Digimon 10,000 DP or less to the owner's hand. Kind of good. Then, when attacking once per turn, if there's a blue card in the sources, you can unsuspend one of your Digimon. When there's a green card in the sources, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. So, if you have both, which, you know, dual colors, you could have both, um, you're doing both, which is very strong. Now, only playing one of it, uh, because it's a bit of a kill card. Um, I want this Imperial German deck to be based around Star Deck Imperial German, where this is just doing the extra thing. And the extra thing sometimes does win games. Uh, and I have played two copies of it, and it does help. However, this card generates so much advantage that I find it to be just a lot better. But that's just me. You could try playing multiples of this card, and you'll probably be fine. That's my opinion. And that's actually it for level 6s right now. Um, I was playing original blue Imperial German in the deck at, at one point, but I found that it was just lackluster. Like, it wasn't really needed anymore. You know what I mean? Like, back when it, that Imperial German was the only Imperial German, and your options and your Digimon were limited based on the card pool, it was a very good card. It was the obvious pick. But now there's just so many good cards that you don't need freaking... Um, BT 1.5 Imperial. You also don't need EX1 Imperial. I've never thought about that card. That card, I haven't even tried that card. It's never been a thought in my brain. Um, I have tried BT 1.5 Imperial. I've not even thought about trying EX1 Imperial. Just these are fine. Uh, right now, anyway. I don't have any major complaints about it. Level 7s. Level 7s. We're playing one Blitz Omni because sometimes you just win the game. And we're playing one Imperial Gym on Paladin mode as it's level 7. That glare is terrible. There we go. Hope that's better. Okay. Now, don't be deceived by the 7 cost to evolve. Because you can... This card is very, very interesting. And the re... part of the reason why we play the Blitz Omni. So when one of your Digimon would Digivolve into this card, you may return a white level 7 Digimon from your trash to the bottom of your deck to reduce the cost by 4. So sometimes what will happen is you you won't always put Omni for game. Sometimes it'll be in security. That's fine. It's not a big deal. And if it is, you can evolve this card for three and continue your turn by bottom decking this, which is okay. Not a big deal. It's 60,000 DP, by the way, which is kind of big, kind of thick. You know what I mean? And then the wind digivolving when attacking ability, not once per turn, by the way. You may return one, one, two color card from this Digimon digital card to the bottom of the deck. Uh, to trash all Digivolution cards from one of your opponent's Digimon. Which, you know, doesn't seem great. But, there's more. Then, return all your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards to the bottom of the opponent's deck. In any order. So, this is kind of a hard counter to Mastamon. Because what Mastamon does is it DNA Digivolves, makes its big thick stack. You play free Digimon, right? But Imperials 1 Paladin Mode come up the board. 
it can just wipe the board. And sometimes you don't care about this. Sometimes you just evolve this for seven. You evolve for seven and you wipe your opponent's board. Kind of like Nidhogg, where you evolve it for five and you wipe your opponent's board. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Um, it's a really good card, but it's really, really unnecessary if you ask my opinion. Because sometimes you have no problem winning games before either of these cards become an option. Like it's that, it's that, this deck is crazy. Crazy. All right. Tamers. Uh, dual color, Ken Davis, four of it. You gain a memory to start on your main phase if you have a blue, and a memory if you control a green. You gain two memory each turn. And then when once per turn, if you would evolve into a multicolored Digimon, you can suspend it to unsuspend it. Very good card. You got to play four of it. Uh, we're playing three Davis because it's a memory tamer. That could potentially add you two cards when you play it. A blue and a green. Very strong tamer. Very good. Uh, we are playing only three hammer sparks for options. Three hammer sparks. We're playing one ice wall. And... We're playing one proxy card. One proxy card being hidden potential discovered. Because HBD in this deck is crazy. It's actually kind of stupid. Uh, straight up. It's free. Um, for this real quick combo, I need this. I guess this. This, sure. Uh, we'll say this. And, and this. Okay. Whatever. Sure. Okay. Great. We'll shuffle up real quick. Security. Whatever. Who cares? Doesn't really matter. Okay. Let's say that we're going second. Let's say that we're going second. Your po opponent puts us to two. Sure. All right. Two is fine. Who cares? We'll draw for turn. Great. We'll hatch Demi. Whatever. We'll evolve Vmon. We'll evolve X Vmon. And we'll play Davis. Going to four. Got a Vmon, a Vmon, and a Ken Davis. Okay, sounds good. Great. Uh, opponent, I don't know. They promote, they attack us. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, they just do whatever they want to do. We're at three. Great. Okay. You guys, are you guys prepared for the Wombo combo? The Wombo combo. We draw. We promote. Um, we hard drop Stingmon. Go to zero. That's step one. Uh, step two, we swing with jamming. So we draw Demi, draw Vmon first and draw Demi V. We draw two cards right away. Pretty free. Uh, it survives because it's jamming, which is very, very strong. Then we just DNA Digivolve into that. We spin something to the bottom of their deck. And then we attack again. We draw. We unsuspend. We un and it has jamming, by the way. And we swing again. Three damage. Three damage. Create like three damage. Right away. Right fucking away. And they lose a card because we spun a card. That's just one combo. It's one this deck has a lot of combos, a lot of cheeky ways to do free damage. Like make no mistake. Um you can win this game without even going into Imperial Dramon. That's how good this Imperial Dramon deck profile is. Or Imperial Dramon in general in BT8. You don't even need Imperial Dramon to win. And if you just if you get it, even better. Free bodies. Free stuff. I don't know. That's the deck profile anyway. The the deck is very strong. It's one of the best decks of the format. And I don't have any complaints with the deck. I think it's very, very good. Very, very good.